Hello and welcome to Get to Know Science. This video is about the life cycle of a star. We start with a nebula, which is a cloud of gas and dust. The particles are all attracted to each other because of gravity. So they all move towards each other and the clouds become more and more concentrated, which forms a protostar. The protostar will get hotter and hotter as the clouds become denser and denser and closer together and as it becomes hotter and denser fusion reactions will start to occur which will release energy. The core will become hotter and hotter and it will start to shine and it will become a main sequence star. Our Sun is at this stage and a star will spend most of its lifetime as a main sequence star. They fuse hydrogen into helium causing an outward pressure in the star which is opposed by gravity pulling everything inwards. So if we imagine our star and this is why main sequence stars last so long, this is the main part of the life cycle and stars will spend billions of years at this stage. The reason for that is because there are two opposing forces which are balanced. So there's gravity pulling everything inwards and then because the core is doing fusion that creates an outward pressure. And these two forces act in opposite directions and they balance so there are, it's important to understand that there are two balanced forces acting here. They're in equilibrium and they keep the star stable. Now, when a star runs out of hydrogen nuclei to fuse together, it reaches the end of the main sequence stage. What happens is the fusion will stop. So this force no longer applies. And the only force that is exerted on the star is the force from gravity pulling everything inwards towards the center. So fusion will stop and the core will contract under gravity and it will get denser and hotter. The outer layers of the star will expand outwards and cool down, taking on a red color. And for stars that are roughly the size of our sun, they will become a red giant. So this is a red giant star. At this stage, the star will start to fuse helium into heavier elements like carbon and oxygen. And once it has fused helium into carbon and oxygen, then again fusion will stop. And the problem is, as the outer layers get further away from the core, so I mean red giants will expand. Our sun, when it becomes a red giant, we predict that it will expand so far that it will reach up to the Earth. So it will swallow up Mercury and Venus and it will possibly swallow the Earth as well or at least reach right up to the Earth. So the outer layers of these stars, these red giants, are expanding outwards and they get further away from the core. And that means the effect of gravity is weaker and eventually they'll just drift off into space. And that forms what's called a planetary nebula. So you can see all that's left in the middle is the core, that white core in the middle. And the outer layers have just drifted off into space. And it leaves behind a very, very hot, very, very dense core, which is called a white dwarf. And it no longer does any fusion and it will eventually cool down to form a black dwarf. And this is what happens to stars that are roughly the same size as our sun. But for more massive stars, the story is quite different. And to see the difference, we need to go back to the red giant stage. Now for stars that are very, very big, they end up as red supergiants. And red supergiants are able to fuse heavier elements. So they don't just stop at carbon and oxygen. In these red supergiants, fusion continues until all elements up to iron have been formed. Once the star has formed an iron core, then fusion stops and the core collapses in on itself and rebounds in an enormous explosion called a supernova. 
and a supernova is such a large and bright explosion that it can outshine the entire galaxy of which it is a part. Now in this very instant all the rest of the elements in the periodic table all the ones that are heavier than iron are created by fusion and are blasted out into space. So all elements that are heavier than iron for example gold, silver, platinum they were all fused inside a supernova in that moment that it exploded. What's left after a supernova is called a neutron star which is made entirely of neutrons. It is very very dense and very small and the biggest stars of all don't end up as a neutron star they end up as a black hole. The gravitational field of a black hole is so strong that not even light can escape from it. So this is the life cycle of a star laid out for you as a type of flow chart everything starts as a nebula which is just that cloud of gas and dust which then under gravity will come together to form a protostar and when it gets hot enough and dense enough fusion will start hydrogen nuclei will start to be fused to make helium nuclei and it will become a main sequence star the star will ignite and it will spend most of its lifetime as a main sequence star. Now depending on its size it will either go this way to the left or the other way to the right. Stars roughly the same size as our Sun will take this path on the left. Once all the hydrogen is used up they will become a red giant and they'll start to fuse heavier elements. They'll fuse helium into carbon and oxygen. Once that fusion has ended the outer layers will drift off into space to form a planetary nebula and what's left behind in the middle is just a white dwarf. It's a dead star, it's not doing any fusion anymore and it will cool down off over many many years and become a black dwarf. When hydrogen runs out it will then become a red supergiant star and in a red supergiant they don't stop at fusing carbon and oxygen they will fuse elements all the way up to iron and once they have an iron core it will explode as a supernova which is a massive massive explosion and in that explosion all the other heavier elements are fused everything heavier than iron is fused in a supernova and is blasted out into space what's left over after a supernova will either be a neutron star which is just made of neutrons and is very very small very dense or and this only happens for the very biggest stars it will end up as a black hole and black holes have incredibly strong gravitational pulls and they pull everything into it not even light can escape a black hole okay so that was a video covering the life cycle of a star i hope you found it useful as always make sure you like comment share and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.